How did they do this to you? How did they do this to you? Were you the weapon that they used as they tore apart the family? Did they bring you here as they were passing through? Tell me, how did they do this to you? Now you don't want to go home And now you say that you never will go home Take a tram across the city Past the places where your brother died Of the comfort for the girls who work alone And I can't tell you that you're not alone So, so First, I'm going to ask you to describe your music in three words. No! No, that's your job. Uh, so, you want me to describe your music well, in three words? I, I hate that, that the whole thing, the reason for the existence of music is that you can't put it into words. That's the, the whole point of music, because there's all these things that we... Like, when you're a kid, yeah, mm -hmm. and you... Uh, the grown-ups tell you that the world is like this. And as you grow up, you get a bit older, and you, and you go... No, it's not. It's like... I don't know what it's like. And then you hear a piece of music when you're... However old it is, that you discover the idea of music. You hear this piece of music, and you go... That's what the world is like. And that's the point of art, isn't it? I mean, and, and, and I think music, of all the art forms, is the one that most people, it's the first one that they go, yes, that's what it's like. I really think that. I was, definitely for me, I was like eight or nine, and I was here listening to music and going, yeah, that's what the world's actually like. And all these things that they, they say, it's rubbish. Who inspired you? Well, I, gr I grew up, in the, in the 1960s, I was a child in the 60s. I was too young to be a hippie or anything. But I had older brothers and sisters and the house was full of music. And on one side of the Atlantic there was the Beatles and the Who and the Kinks and the Stones. And, the, and on the other side of the Atlantic was Tamla Motown and, and soul, soul music, American soul music of the 60s, which is my kind of first love. So that kind of thing. I remember hearing hearing the Who's, my, the Who doing my generation when I was ten. Georgia yeah. was Guns N' Roses. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? Uh, Twelve. Which song? Uh, November Rain. Huh? November Rain. I remember okay, that. I'm a girl. <laughs> yeah. I don't it just, look. I think the other was Nirvana. I'm sorry to say that. Don't want to be sorry. <laughs> no, it doesn't, the whole thing about, the other thing about music, right, it's really interesting is that music is like food because you can, you just like what you like. There's no point in anyone telling you what you ought to like. You like what you like. Yeah, and, there, and there's lots of food that I know is bad for me. I like it. And there's lots of music that I know it's shit music made for money by greedy bastard corporate record companies. But I can't help it. I like it. It makes me dance or whatever, you know? And so its point is telling people what they should like. You know, we just like what we like. You know? Everybody and everybody's different. It's even it's even more wonderful. Everybody likes different things. Like everybody likes different foods, it's the same thing. So you wouldn't imagine your life without being involved with music? No. What else could you do? Well, it'd be true. It's a good question. <laughs> what else could I do? But also, I think that um, it is that thing that it makes sense of the world. Because I, I sometimes... I mean, I love... Visual, visual things, I think, are, in, are really important. Like... Uh, Combinations of light and water. Mm -hmm. um, like everything in the world is actually combinations of light and water. But particularly if you, you watch the, the, the sun on the sea, I'm always writing about these things, or clouds or sunsets. And then you try to put it into words, well, how do you do it? And then you hear a piece of music and you go, actually, that's, that's, that's it. That's the sound that that looks like. Sometimes. I, 
but I don't have. Somebody said to me about the internet killing music or something. You know, you know what will kill music? And I think what kills music is too much music. So I don't have music on at home ever. I don't like music being on. I like to be. Huh? No, I don't want it. If I'm doing something else, I don't want it. I like to go in. Cars are wonderful, right? Cars are places to listen to music which happen to have wheels. Um, and they take you from A to B. But the most important thing about a car is it's the perfect place to listen to music, yeah? And the other, th and the other thing is that I have a studio and if I have something I want to listen to, I'm going to go to the studio and I'm going to sit down and listen to it. And uh, or get my car listen to it. And I'm going to be alone. Generally, I like to be alone. So how's your everyday life? Quiet. Oh no, I want it to be quiet, it's not quiet actually. How is everybody like? How do you mean? Like everybody else's. Everybody else's, except I don't have to go to work in the morning. <laughs> but actually, unfortunately, we, we had this wonderful guy called Tommy, who was the manager of the band for a long time, and very close to us, and the tour manager and everything. And he did everything for us. And he died about 18 months ago. Since when we've had to kind of manage ourselves, which has been difficult and it involves a lot of boring staring at computers and answering letters and adding up money and figures and talking to bank people. All these things we have to do now. I hope not forever. So there is a lot of that in our lives suddenly. So I met somebody after after Tommy died and she said, somebody in the, in the music business side of music, and she said, you will find it really interesting for three months and then you will hate it. And she was exactly right. But, um, that I did find the, the mechanics of the music industry really interesting for three months and now it's just boring and repetitive and someone's got to do it. You know, but I wish it wasn't me, but right now it is. <coughs> so there's a bit of that in my everyday life, but apart from that, it's just like, and where what do we do every day? What's everyday life like? It's eating, eating nice food. <laughs> Whereabouts do you live? I live in Bradford, mm -hmm. in Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. So you, now you've been together for 30 years, as you know the army. Well, Newman Lime has existed for 30 years. I mean, obviously we haven't been together. Although, we, although now this band, we have actually, this band has been together a long time. Um, I mean, Michael's, uh, Nelson, 20 years. And Michael started working for us a year after Dean joined in 93, 94. Well, the year before. Then Michael became drummer when Robert stopped. Only Marshall's kind of the last five years. The rest of us yes. have been together a long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you ever felt fed up with New Model Army? Did you think about doing something else, forming a new band or I'm not yes. going to talk about the solo album that you made? Yes, yes. No, no. I mean a new group. I was, I was thinking about this the other day and because we, we were playing a song, Courage, which is from 1986. Mm -hmm. And I remember I had left that band. I had left New Model Army at that point. And Moose and Robert went up to record a B-side for Poison Street in Newcastle. And they came around and said, we're going up to record. And I said, I've left the band. Go and record a fucking thing. I don't care. Do it. You know, the usual things. Yeah. Bands are like this. So, and, then, and then three hours after they went, I thought, my God, what are they going to do? They'll do something I don't like. And then, oh, my God. So I got in my car and I drove up there. And Robert recorded some, uh, sort of wrote the backing track. And then I sat in the snow in my car with a cassette of the bit of music and sort of wrote. I remember writing, I remember writing it in the snow. <laughs> Yeah, I left the band about four times, but mostly, mostly, the, the last few years, I think especially the last five years since Marshall joined, we've been very kind of um, quite together, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. quite a happy band on the whole, and we argue and we fight, and we, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, that's normal, years, I think. 
So, which one of your albums do you consider close of perfection? Well, none of them are very close to perfection, but some I like more than others. It's tricky. I, I really like, of the older ones, I like them. Um, Proud of Thunder Constellation. Oh, yeah. you I mean, it's a very, it's the most successful album. But I think it's a, it's a good album, um, and I think Love and Hope's Cause is a good album. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm actually quite fond of Carnival. A lot of people I don't like it so much, but I actually really like that record. Um, it's got two or three things. It's got two or three things I think are really s right. Red Earth, Carlisle Road. You weren't there. You weren't there. I was on eight. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last two albums have been kind of rock albums. Mm -hmm. And I think today is a good day. Is a good album actually. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a it was a moment because it was all written. Today's a good day was written in one month, mm -hmm. pretty much. Just bang, 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 bang. So let's talk about the latest album. Uh, what's the response so far? The response Are you happy to with it. Uh, I mean, with the response. Response? Yeah, from the people from why, what you sell from the albums. Oh! <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we, you know, like every band, we sell less than we used to because people don't buy records like they used to. You know, this is true for everybody. Um, and sometimes I, I, I talk to, because I have to do the business thing, I talk to our distributor and I said, oh, well, I haven't. Hasn't sold millions of copies, and he said, "Bloody hell, it's sold more than everything else we've distributing." You know what I mean? So it's done okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I think people liked it because it was a, it's a kind of strong album. It sounds like a band. It sounds like a band that. Um, not it's not that we know what we're doing because any band that exists for a long time, of course, we know what we're doing. It's it's the it, we sound like a band that know why we're doing it. I think that's important. And lots of lots of bands that go on and, uh, that, go, that, that last for a long time. Of course, they get better and better and more and more sophisticated, and you learn more and more ways of doing things. But you sometimes you hear a band sort of forget why. But if you hear today is a good day, it sounds like a band that knows why. Which that I'm really I'm sort of proud of. Many hundreds.